Hey out there, this is March 28th, 2019, and it's just about, uh, oh, about 9.16 in the morning here in Northern California, and today, as usual, I'm going to get into a lot of different stuff. Um, I'm going to try to be a little more brief than usual. We'll see what happens here, but, um, you know, I like to play um, music when I am uh, taping. Um, but every time I play, you know, five seconds of um, music, uh, YouTube uh, moderators come in and they uh, they ban my video for copyright uh, claim. And uh, I think that's a real shame. So if I was speaking to the YouTube moderators, I would tell them, hey, what about a fund set up specifically for people who aren't seeking to make any money off their videos and uh, you know it's no different from me playing the radio right now I mean you know how how can that be a copyright claim when I can play the radio in my car with the windows down and the entire public gets the benefit of hearing the music um, I mean are you gonna slap me with a copyright claim and say hey you can't you know you, you I, don't, I don't get it it doesn't make any sense okay um, I suppose if I'm making money or seeking to make money off videos, then I guess there's a point to be made. Say, hey, well, you know, you're profiting here, and uh, so we want a cut. But you understand what I'm saying? I mean, just specifically for people that don't seek to make money off their videos. I mean, come on, you know, five, ten seconds of music, you know, to make my videos more palatable and enjoyable for people, share a little music. I mean, how bad is that? But yet, it's pretty serious, apparently, because, you know, you'll take down any video that has a few seconds worth of uh, copyrighted music. I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't want to go on and on about that, but that's just a suggestion that uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that would be happy to pay, what, the few pennies it would cost for you know, five, ten seconds worth of music. It's absurd. How much can it possibly cost? I'd be happy to pay it if it was easy to do and say, hey, you know, you got to pay this much for using that clip. Something like that you know, I, I would go for. But, um, you know, to just take down people's entire video because they play a couple of seconds worth of, of music, that's not, that doesn't seem right. doesn't sit well with me. But uh, enough said on that. I wanted the theme today to be mainly how how ignorant and how confused the general public is. And this is how the tyrants continue to get, get away with what they're doing here. I'm talking about the kingpins. I'm talking about the grand puppeteers. I'm talking about the masterminds of evil in the land. Okay, and there is plenty of evil. Open your eyes, folks. Okay. Uh, progress has a distinct, definite meaning, definition. And we have been regressing. Okay, that's just a matter of fact that, uh, you know, the, the, the public has been uh, going downhill in terms of social, political, and economic justice. And that is insufferable in the long run. It's unnerving. It's untenable. And it's, it's annoying, it's frustrating, uh, it's antagonizing, and it's, it induces fear, insecurity, uh, and it, uh, it, it steals freedom from people. Okay, and it's every, it has everything to do with money. Remember, money ties in hugely to our paradigm, our pattern of thinking, of speaking, and doing in life. And it ought not be this way. You understand? It's not this way for any of the other creatures. So this is a bunch of bull. It's written in scripture that my people perish for lack of understanding. And that's kind of what I am uh, trying to um, address here. Is this idea that people can no longer afford the luxury, if you want to call it that, of being stupid. Uh, but that's what ignorance and confusion basically is. In a nutshell, it's stupidity. It's willful stupidity, willful ignorance. They say, hey, you know what? 
just do what I do. Just go out there and you get a good job and you make a lot of money and you comply and you conform and you fit into the system and that shows that you have common sense. That's pragmatic. That's being practical. That's what everybody wants you to do. That's how you become successful, right? You just, you know, you, you've got to fit in. You've got to be, go get a good education and with the idea that, hey, it's all about career and all about money at the end of the day. All about amassing as much money as you can, as quickly as you can, and enjoy your life because money brings happiness. That's the overall theme, that success is defined very clearly, secularly, secularly and worldly speaking. And that's what it is. It's about making a lot of money. Okay, and I have a big problem with that thinking. A big problem. It, uh, it, go, it flies in the face of everything I know about what's good and right and decent and proper in terms of living our lives for eternity. Not for a temporary, it's like living your life for a dream. It's like going to bed at night and saying, okay, I just want a really good dream. I just, I want a dream that I went to school and I got some great job and I made gobs and gobs of money and everybody worshiped me and I was really somebody and I was the epitome of success, the exemplification of what you're supposed to do in life, you know? And that's it. And when I wake up, I don't think about that. I don't think about when I wake up and it's not my reality anymore about what it's going to be like on the other side of this thing, okay? But I am strongly suggesting and recommending that everybody uh, get hip and, and start thinking ahead here. Start thinking about answering someday, okay, for the way we've lived our lives, for the values we have. And it comes down to values. Are, are our values in line with our owner's values, okay? You have an owner you understand, unless you created yourself, okay, unless you know how to make a human brain and human limbs and human organs and make a human being, you did not create yourself, you did not make yourself, therefore you do not own yourself. Do you understand? That is the right attitude, the right spirit we need to have to find true success. Okay, and at the end of the day, when we have to stand in front of our owner and give account for how we've lived our lives, for the things we've thought, said, and done, what we've cultivated and harbored in our heart and mind, our spirit and our soul, what are our values, then we'll be able to have a clear conscience. We'll feel worthy and deserving of inheriting a better world, a world where there's really progress, where there's people there that have a like mind, and they want to go to a bit, they want... To live in contentment, peace, safety, security, freedom, prosperity. Do you understand? All those things that we all want when we sit down and think about it. And if we are willing to deny those to other people through just complacency and indifference, oh, well, they're just weak. You see, you've been inculcated and trained. You've been programmed and conditioned, indoctrinated to believe that's the right spirit. That's an okay attitude to have. It's a social Darwinian thing survival of the strongest if really it comes down to survival of those that value their conscience least that value their integrity least that value understanding the proper thought patterns and paradigms to have in regard to eternity okay not just going to bed at night and having a good dream and saying that's what it's all about because in essence that's what it is this life is very brief and it could be over at any time. We all know that. That's not being morbid or negative. That's a scientific matter of fact. We never know when it's going to come to an end. And even if you live to be 100 years old, you'll, you'll have lived less than a million hours, of which how much of that is sleeping? Approximately a third. And how much when you're, you're too feeble to even, you know, you may be senile. You're too young. You were a baby. I mean, just think about how brief. Our time here is. It's important to have the right values. This is about eternal salvation. So, you know, that's why I tell people, get as smart as you can, as quickly as you can in life. And that means getting the right values. Having your values in line with your owner's values. Who is your owner? It's none less than God Almighty, the Creator God Almighty. As described in the first chapters of Scripture, we... The one true almighty creator God describes themselves, himself, herself as a they, 
Okay, it's very important to understand, anybody that calls themselves a Christian, this is their paradigm, this is what they believe, that God chooses to be male and female. Okay, God is not right being just male. God is not right just being female. God wants and decides to be and is, by supreme command, the sovereign owner of the universe and everything contained therein, okay, to be male and female. That's just the way it is, and that's how all creation spawns forth. That's how we spawn forth, right? The human race and all other creatures. It's a male-female paradigm right down the line to the smallest insects understand this thing. It's, it's just the instinct God built into us to create, to be like him. We're very much like God. All the other creatures are like God in that sense too. But we humans are distinctly like God, very much made in the image and likeness of our owner, the creator God. We are made virtually limitless in terms of potential. Anything we can imagine, anything we can think up, we can make